Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday morning. What a beautiful day it is outside. Leaves changing color, leaves falling off trees, nice warm weather. So this is a beautiful fall day. Hope you're enjoying it. I know we're all, I'm Pastor Todd. I'm here for the daily devotion this morning. And we're all awaiting to see who our next president's going to be. Hey, good morning, Bernadine and Taylor um, and Angie Prince. Glad you guys are here. I think I missed a few of you coming on too. Had a little technical difficulty at the start, but we got things figured out. Uh, I'm just adjusting my phone here a little bit so you can see me better. So thank you for your patience. Just a couple minutes uh, into this. Hi, Rosie. Glad you're here as well. But it took a couple minutes to get things working, but we got it. <laughs> Gotta love technology. All right. Well, we are all perfectly waiting the results of the election, so that'll be neat when that is revealed. Hi, Cheryl. Hope you're all doing okay. Hey, as pastors, we've been going through the Ten Commandments, and today we are going to look at Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. And the bottom line is, do not lie. That's the commandment we're going to be talking about today. Hi, Meredith. Glad you're here, and Judy as well. Um, so let me read Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. Very short. It says, but very, very strong comment. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. That is the verse we're going to look at. And... False testimony or false witness is explained in two passages that follow our verses for today, where the context is clearly legal. And we're going to look at those. Exodus chapter 23, verses 1 and 2, and also verses 6 and 8. So let me read those this morning. Exodus chapter 23, verses 1 and 2. You shall not spread a false report. You shall not join hands with a wicked man to be a malicious witness. You shall not fall in with the many to do evil, nor shall you bear witness in a lawsuit, siding with the many so as to pervert justice. And then we'll jump down to verses 6 and 8, and verse 6 through 8 in Exodus 23. It says, You shall not pervert the justice due to your poor in his lawsuit. Keep far from a false charge and do not kill the innocent and righteous, for I will not acquit the wicked, and you shall take no bribe. For a bribe blinds the clear-sighted and subverts the cause of those who are in the right. Giving false testimony means not telling the truth. It means lying in the courtroom. So we see this example in these scripture passages, so kind of in a public sector. Hi, Chris Hoover. Glad you're joining us as well. Um, let me say that again. Um, giving false witness means not telling truth or lying in the courtroom. In our public dealings, this is one place in the courtroom where we have our public dealings. Israel, God knew, needed a justice system free of corruption if Israel was to survive. And in that day, um, witnesses were dependent upon much more back in the day of the Israelite, Israelites than they are today. Witnesses and their integrity were key to establishing guilt or innocence as opposed to some of the means we have today where we have cameras and we have DNA testing and the like. So giving false testimony means not telling the truth, lying in our private dealings as well. We just talked about public dealings in the courtroom was one example in public. It also means giving false testimony means not telling the truth or lying in our private dealings. You see, God wants us to be a holy people. Publicly and privately, that means always, every day, all the time. Not just to bring glory to God in our relationship with Him. That is extremely important. He wants us to do that. But He's concerned about our relationship with one another as well and also our witness. And when we lie, it doesn't help our relationships horizontally with each other and it doesn't help our witness for Him. And we want to be a good witness. So whether we're in public like in the courtroom, the example we saw here or other places in public, or whether we're in private, dealing with people, dealing with God, all the time, public, private, all the time, 24-7, we need to make sure that we do not lie, that we're telling the truth, that we're not a false witness. And make sure we're not giving false testimony. 
But what are some ways that we give false testimony? I know if we had time, you would all weigh in with different ways, maybe that you've seen other people do it, or maybe you have done it in the past. There are many. I could go through a laundry list of these. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a few, just so we remember. How is it that we give a false testimony? Let's get specific. Well, one way is leaving something out of the story. And you've probably seen this done, right? Um, you're telling the story, but you know if you don't say this part or this part, they're not going to know that didn't happen because you're putting the story together. But by not including that, you're not telling the truth. You're not telling the full truth. I know when we watch movies or on TV, you see a courtroom scene, and then the um, official in the courtroom says, do you promise to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God, or something along those lines. And that really has to do with telling the whole truth, not leaving parts out, putting the whole story out there, transparent for everyone to see. And then there's no deception. There's no lies that can be told if the whole thing's out there. But when we leave parts out or we tell half-truths, um, that's being deceptive. That's not laying it out there for all to see the whole story. Or how about this one? twisting the facts. You know, you get all the facts laid out, but maybe the ordering of the facts might be one way you twist them, right? If you put them in a different order, then maybe that doesn't show, uh, at, you know, it doesn't paint the picture of what reality is. Maybe it works towards your favor, but it's deceptive. It's lying. We need to make sure we don't twist the facts. Another way, and you know, maybe you've seen this happen too. You know, you're kind of put on the spot. Someone challenges you, so you just start making things up. And you make your own story. And you try to have it all fit together. You know, that is a real challenge. It's very dangerous because now you're strapped with that story. You have to remember that story. If asked in a day or so to regurgitate, you got to remember the details you just threw out there. Or people are going to what? That isn't what you said the other day. Your integrity's at stake. Or in five years when it comes up, or in 50 years when it comes up, you need to always make sure you tell that same story. So you got to remember that story, maybe rehearse that story, and that's baggage. That's things that the Lord does not want us to carry. That weights us down, having to remember that so we don't lose our integrity. But that's deceptive. So let's not make things up. Let's just paint the picture of the story that happened as clear and accurately as we can, and then we can sleep at night, our conscience won't bother us. We say, yep, I said the right thing. That's the best that I can recall it happened. And we feel good about it. And somebody challenges us the next day or in two weeks or in five years or 50 years, it's gonna be our best recollection of that same, you know, those same facts. Bottom line is God wants us to be free from deception as his believers. Even though deception is a way for many people, God's followers must not do it. And I think we really have to be careful where we get our advice from. You know, maybe you're in a difficult situation and you, know, you go, so, hey, should I, should, how should I handle this situation? And the world's ways are just, oh, leave that part out. Oh, that's going to cost you a lot of money. I don't think you need to go through that. And you're going to get advice from people, maybe that are going to give you the advice from the world and not from what God would want. So you want to make sure when you get advice, whether how you should handle a situation and what you should say in a situation, make sure you're speaking to a believer, one that really does uphold um, God's word and uh, his commands, because it's important. Your integrity is at stake. Um, so I think I just want to leave us with, I think there, like I see kind of two main things. One is really, we do not want to lie because we care about our relationship with God. We want to have integrity with him vertically. And then the horizontal plane with other people. We want to make sure that we always tell the truth and that um, we don't lose our integrity with others. And then God wants to use us when we have integrity, when we're telling the truth. He wants to use us as his witness to other people, right? And so we want to demonstrate what it means to tell the truth all the time to others. And that will draw people into what it, uh, what it looks like to be a believer and it'll also just, um, you know, show them what God's word wants for each of us to carry out as his believers. Let's pray. Lord, you ask us in scripture um, that we should not bear false witness. Lord, we should not lie. We should tell the truth all the time. Lord, we need your Holy Spirit 
to help guide us to that end. Sometimes there's a lot at stake. But Lord, our integrity is at stake if we don't tell the truth. Lord, we want our integrity to be at stake. It takes a long time to earn our integrity back with others. Lord, we want to have a relationship with them where they can see us as people with integrity, people they can trust, people that are going to tell the truth. And Lord, with you, we don't want to hide anything from you. You know our hearts better than we know our hearts ourselves. You know when we're not telling the truth. Lord, help us just to be transparent with you too, Lord, and just call it like it is. Help us to speak the truth at all times in our relationship with you and in our relationship with others, Lord, so we can be a great witness for you. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Well, that is it for today, but I look forward to you joining me next Thursday for the Daily Devotion at 10 o'clock, so we'll see you then if I don't see you on Sunday for those of you that worship at Colonial. Um, and I do want to invite you to tune in tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. Pastor Bob will have the devotion ready, so you'll want to catch him here on Facebook Live. If you worship at our church, at Colonial Presbyterian Church, either campus, we are glad you do. If you don't, you are welcome to come and check us out and worship with us. We'd love that. So we have two ways of worshiping. One is indoors, and the other one is online. So on Sunday morning, if you feel comfortable only doing the online portion, you don't feel comfortable coming indoors, that's fine. Whatever you think is best for your family, that happens at 10 o'clock, the online service. You can join us on Facebook Live or on YouTube. If you're ready to come indoors, we have two locations, our Overland Park campus and our South Kansas City campus. Both of them, you will register um, before you come and then just show up. Register online, then just show up. You'll be masked when you get to the campus and you'll be also asked to practice social distancing. So both of those will be in practice, in play. Our times of worship for indoor at the Overland Park campus are nine, is 9.15 and 10.45. And the worship time at our South Kansas City campus on Sunday um, is going to be 10.45 a.m. for the indoor service. So get out there and enjoy this day the best you can. And let's make it the best we can with the Lord's help. So we'll see you next week. God bless you.